This evening's liturgy begins with darkness and with silence. We wait in hope. This is our Paschal Vigil. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages to him be glory and power through every age and forever By his holy
and glorious wounds. May Christ our Lord guard us and keep us May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendour, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exult in glory, the risen Saviour shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and that with full hearts and minds and voices we should praise you, the unseen God, the Father Almighty, and your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has ransomed us by his death and paid for us the price of Adam's sin. For this is the Passover of that true Lamb of God, by whose blood the homes of all the faithful are hallowed and protected. This is the night when of old you saved our fathers, delivering the people of Israel from their slavery and leading them dry shod through the sea. This is the night when Jesus Christ vanquished hell and rose triumphant from the grave. This is the night when all who believe in him are freed from sin and restored to grace and holiness. Most blessed of all nights, when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away, lost innocence regained and morning turned to joy. Night truly blessed, when heaven is wedded to earth, and all creation reconciled to God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, 
Accept our sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering, and grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light. For Christ, the morning star, has risen, never again to set, and is alive and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we await the risen Christ, let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, recalling how he saved his people in ages past, and in the fullness of time sent his Son to be our Redeemer. And let us pray that through this Easter celebration, God may bring to perfection in each of us the saving work he has begun. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky, to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day, and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And there was morning, and there was and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was morning, evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. Let us pray that we may see God's image restored. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. Your love cannot be contained and overflows in the wonder of creation. You formed the universe out of nothing and moulded us from the clay of the earth. All you have made sings of your marvellous deeds, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons, entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature, they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued for forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark 
and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him in the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put his, his hand out and took it, and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, bird and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Let us pray that God will wash away all that corrupts his work and restore in us the beauty for which we were made. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our salvation. In your perfect justice, you hate the world's sin. Noah and his family risked ridicule for your sake, yet their obedience brought them blessing. Flood our world with the tide of your love and rid us of all that disfigures your glorious creation. O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt? that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, 
that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and, there, and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, and none of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them, on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Let us pray that God will give freedom to his enslaved people. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. You heard the agony of your people as they cried out from their slavery, and you gave them Moses to lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear the cry of the enslaved and the homeless today, and lead us through the turbulent sea of life to our true home with you, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. A reading from the prophet, the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. He was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, 
Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open my graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place on you, I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act says the Lord. Let us pray that God will bring, will breathe new life into his weary creation. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, you bring life from the darkest valley of death. When hope is lost and our dry bones are scattered in shame, speak your word to your broken people, that we may stand confidently before you and breathe your spirit into us, that we may live, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Alleluia! Christ is risen! We say together, He is risen indeed! Alleluia! And together we say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us <clears throat> who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him we know that Christ, 
being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. We join together in singing the Alleluia's as a response to the song. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing together. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, when Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel his dominion. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The sea beheld it and fled. Judah, Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flint stone into a flowing spring. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said, Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It's truly wonderful that we can light our Paschal candle and I look forward to the moment when we can take the candle back into church and light it there. I think the operative phrase in that um, Gospel of the Resurrection for me this year is when Jesus says to them, do not be afraid. I think he's saying that to each one of us. For we all have our fears in the global situation that we're caught up in. He says to us on a daily basis, and I think he says it in the depths of our beings, do not be afraid. Well, this evening 
we've done most of the things we would normally do in church and we are together alone but together one thing we're not going to do is to renew our baptismal promises we've got no font to process to and i thought that would be what we need to do when we are back in church so on that first sunday when we're all together back in church one of the things we will do the centerpiece of what we'll do is to renew our baptismal promises i'd like to think it might still be within the 50 days of easter maybe the last the last day perhaps pentecost will be back in church whenever it is let's renew our baptismal commitment our joy in the easter faith risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said peace be with you then were they glad when they saw the Lord Alleluia Alleluia the peace of the risen Christ be with you all Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we had this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord of life, with unbounded joy we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and on this night of our redemption, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Apostles, Nicholas, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And as I receive communion here, I do so on behalf of you all. Make your own spiritual communion and be assured that the risen Christ comes to you, is with you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. This blessing is for you, for your home, for those who are with you and for those from whom you are apart and feel that pain of isolation. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting forth from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We conclude our worship with the Easter dismissal, so you are expected to join in with the response. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia. Alleluia. Easter has come, so be filled with the joy of this celebration. And we're going to finish with um, some resounding music from our director of music, Tim. So Tim, thank you for doing this for us. Do join all together at 10 o'clock for our Easter morning mass. And then if you're around still, well, where else are you going for benediction in the evening at six o'clock? Have a peaceful night.
Unfortunately, James put himself on. I apologise. Well, there you go. You can't trust the technology, can you? But you can trust him. So, if you don't hear music tonight, we'll do our best to hear some music from Tim tomorrow morning. We have some lined up for the morning, if I can get it to work. But something had to pick up. So, is taking the focus from you. So if you could just move it back a little bit and we can see you better in focus. But thank you so much for doing this for us. Well, thank you. Have a, have a peaceful night, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Let's get the music to play. Hold on. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. Hope you have a good one. Well, look, all droids are the 